Hello garden friends, Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com. Today is June 25th and today I went on a trip with the New Jersey Native Plant Society, the Jersey Shore chapter. Have you joined your Native Plant Society? I highly recommend it. The dues is only about $20 for the year and you get notified about all these different kinds of trips and activities that are really focused on native plant enthusiasts. And today there was a trip, a native plant walk around Wells Mills County Park. And we were guided by Jason Hafstad. Uh, he's a botanist and he works with the Department of Environmental Protection. It was a very interesting walk. We saw lots of biodiversity, lots of different types of native plants, and he told us some really fascinating things about plants that I thought I was really familiar with, but now I know a lot more about. So take a look at some of these highlights from today's walk and join the Native Plant Society and maybe I'll see you on the next trip. So this is another mountain laurel we talked about earlier in the same family as the rhododendron. And it has these really characteristic bark with these long vertical strips. Um, this is one that you can ID, if, if it's old enough, you can ID it just by the bark. Some blueberries uh, can be broken up into high bush and low bush blueberries. Uh, we have several species of low bush, several species of high bush. Um, obviously this is one of the high bush blueberries, low bush blueberries don't get much taller than that. Um, and this, I believe, is New Jersey blueberry, as opposed to high bush blueberry, the, the more common vaccinium cornbosum. Um, because if you look on the underside of the leaf, there are no hairs, and the leaf is somewhat glaucous. Um, glaucous means uh, it's got a, a, a whitish kind of, they call a bloom, B-O-U-M-E. It's like this whitish powder, kind of very fine powder that you can wipe away. Uh, Vaccinium corymbosum, the high bush blueberry, would have hairs on the other side of the leaf uh, and it wouldn't have that, that glaucous bloom that you can wipe away, that whitish layer that kind of is on the, the underside of the leaf. Um, so this is called New Jersey blueberry. The scientific name is Vaccinium caesariensi. Caesariensi is the Latin name for New Jersey. Uh, and this species was discovered in New Jersey, first described by uh, a very well-known botanist named Kenneth McKenzie, who found uh, an unusual looking blueberry uh, in Tom's River in 1907 uh, and described it as the New Jersey blueberry based on the, the glaucous bloom of both the fruits and the leaves. Common name is highbush blueberry, um, even though they, they are you know, multiple blueberries that grow high. <laughs> okay, but this one is specifically New Jersey high. Right, this, this species. Uh, we'll probably see the other species uh, as we continue because they grow together. And so we don't know that this is necessarily originated here. Right, it was just first described here. I knew a botanist who was studying the, um, I guess you could say the diet of pitcher plants. <laughs> so he would walk around the pine barrens with a, a turkey baster and suck out the water and <laughs> put them in little samples and take them home and study them. Um, but if you look closely, the, the lip of the pitcher uh, is very hairy. And it's got a bunch of the hairs are all pointing downward mm -hmm. which allows the insects to enter but then when they try to crawl out the oh. downward pointing hairs kind of trap them and they, they can't Sticky. get out Sticky, dangerous you, you may be tempted to drink the water in the pitcher if you're dehydrated in the in the wild this is a survival mechanism but uh, you should not <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's got all kinds of enzymes and, and things in there that, that dissolve the, the insects. Ooh. Now, so the, you know, there are certain insects that will go in and will get eaten by the pitcher plant and then they'll kind of just decay and you'll have a bunch of, you know, insect carcasses on the inside of the pitcher. Um, and then there's another suite of insects that have learned how to come in and out and realize that there's a food source down there so they can come in and eat the food of the pitcher. Mm. Um, because that's, that's a, a resource. If you can figure out how to get in and out, that's, that's free food. Mm. A native mosquito that's a specialist on pitcher plant. It's a non-biting mosquito. Not all mosquitoes are pests. Oh. Just like not all flies are pests. Um, but this is a, a mosquito that has co-evolved with the pitcher plant and depends on it. And the larva actually overwinter inside the pitcher plant in the frozen fluid on the inside of the pitcher. And in the spring it thaws out and it turns into an adult. 
Amazing. So it digests some bugs and then and, uh, incubates others. Yeah. It's own little miniature ecosystem inside every single pitcher, uh, which makes it a really good uh, uh, research uh, tool. You know, ecologists have studied you know ecosystem ecology principles just by studying you know all of the complex web of interactions that happens just inside one single pitcher. Hmm. This is, usually makes a rosette of multiple pitchers yeah, and it shoots the, up a flower. the plant you brought it from? Is it here somewhere? Yeah, it's growing on the edge of the water right there. Oh, I see it. Let's see if you can see this. See my laser pointer? The flower of the pitcher plant, which is insect pollinated. So it's a species that eats insects and it's also dependent on insects for pollination. So you can see how similar these are. These are both in the same genus, carrots. They're both sedges in the sedge family. Oh, one grows large, one grows smaller. Yeah, and then this one has smaller perigenia that tend to point down. Um, this has a, you know, a, a structure of multiple perigenia that, that stick out there. Uh, so that's going to have many seeds out? No, well, so each of these is still going to have one akene on the inside. Oh. The akenes are going to be larger and there's going to be more space inside the akenes. So they, they think that when they, when grasses and sedges split evolutionarily, you know, however millions of years ago, um, grasses mostly colonized upland areas, uh, and then sedges kind of split off and colonized wetland areas. Mm -hmm. So when you have the fruits like this that have a lot of air in it, they float. Oh. And they can be oh, dispersed yes. by water. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you if you look um, at the breakdown of grasses and sedges uh, in New Jersey, you'll see that m more grasses grow in uplands than wetlands, and more sedges grow in wetlands than uplands. Um, you know, you can find exceptions to the rule, but um, you know, grasses mm -hmm. do tend to prefer upland habitats. That's probably from mm -hmm. its evolutionary history. So um, you can see it's got these really flaky bark. You know, these flakes just flake off. Anybody know why it would have bark that kind of flakes off like that? Yeah, it's a, a defense against fire. So if one of these flakes gets, <clears throat> the bark catches on fire, it just exfoliate essentially and it throws the fire off of its bark. Sometimes the fire is too, too strong and it, it doesn't work, but it does provide some defense. You can also notice a bunch of green stuff growing on it, right? On the, on the edges, you see all this green yeah, stuff? Yeah. You know what that is? Lichen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lichen. You know, a kind of lichen? Yeah. yeah. So it's probably Cladonia um, it santensis. If you look at it closely under magnification, you'll see that it's got these little structures that make it look like powder. Oh, yeah. Um, Lichens do not harm the tree. Lichens are healthy, beneficial, they benefit the plant, they're a sign of a, a healthy ecosystem. Um, it's a, a common myth that lichens will harm the trees. Uh, I've heard stories of arborists in the inner city that will go around and power wash the street yeah. trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably so a selling tool, are, actually. They get paid for it. Yeah, yeah. so probably, probably a myth for selling. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the highlights from this trip. Jason told us some fascinating stuff about the native plants along the trails at Wells Mills County Park. That's in Weartown, New Jersey. So if you're nearby, I highly recommend going for a visit yourself. Uh, there are also naturalists that work at that park and you may be able to arrange for a tour uh, from one of those naturalists. So give them a call, check it out. Uh, you can learn so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll do another garden update really soon.